right. Um, so hi everyone. I'm Dorian. Um, if we could hit you forgot. Um, today we're going to be talking about front end web development. Um, and we're going to do that by going over a couple of slides just to give you the basics of what front end web dev is. And we're also going to be demoing creating a resume site from scratch completely from the ground up that hopefully you can use to showcase your projects and, you know, finish it off yourself really. Um, just to advertise to employers and stuff. So let me start off by sharing my screen because you guys need to actually see that. Uh, can you guys see this? Can someone just yes. Please? Yes, we do. Cool. Okay. So, front end web development. Uh, let's get started. So we're going to cover three different uh, basics into web development. That is that would be HTML. CSS and JavaScript. Of course, there's more, but these are just the three that we'll cover and they're really the basics too. Um, so to start off, HTML is has like one real job really, and that's putting elements on the page. And you might be asking what elements are. They're like objects, like buttons, uh, text boxes, pictures, that sort of thing. Those are really referred to as elements as to um, instead of like objects like you would see in Java or something. So they're usually, uh, they're usually called elements. That's what we're going to refer to them as. Um, and elements can be displayed in two ways that, I'm, that, I'm, that I know of. So there is blocks and inline. And blocks are essentially just what, what it says. They're blocks. Um, they have content in them. And they're sort of like, uh, think of them as like bricks. You stack bricks on top of other bricks to build things. Uh, essentially, we stack blocks on top of other blocks to build, to build things. Um, and inline is the other. Uh, side of that. Think of this like a Microsoft Word document. You're typing some text out on the page and it like fills up in a line, like horizontally, just going down a page. That's inline. Uh, some examples of these are uh, div tags are block elements. Uh, if you're not familiar with what they are, they're basically just divisions on your web page. Uh, they hold any kind of content, really. Uh, they're like the building blocks of web development. Um, I don't know if you learned this in your any HTML class you may have taken. I know when I was in high school, I didn't learn about div tags at all, but they're like the, the framework. Uh, so that's kind of crucial to know. And inline, like I said, is uh, text really. Um, as you type on the page, it goes in a line all the way out. Um, and of course, the goal of HTML is to place elements on the page without much styling. So if you make a page and just HTML look very plain, and it's usually very, it's pretty fast to load because it's plain. Um, so yeah, that's really the basis of it. And just for a uh, fun fact, fun note, right now we're on HTML5 still, I believe. I don't think there's an HTML6, um, but most browsers nowadays use HTML5, unless you're using Netscape. I don't know if that still exists anymore, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, moving on to CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Um, these apply looks to your HTML elements. So for example, if you go on a, a web page like uh, I don't even know a good one. Let's say Apple site, site. They have buttons in the top for like all their products. Um, I can show you once we're done with the slides. Uh, like you know for iPhone, iPad, they like they don't look like buttons. They look very flat and clean and gray. Uh, that's usually done by the CSS. Uh, this applies color, positioning, uh, styling, and pretty much makes your site look pretty. Um, it's a very structured language. So unlike um, HTML, which is organized by tags, this one is organized sort of like uh, JSON objects, if you might have seen JSON. Um, if not, it's you can think of it as like key value pair. So like there's a key, for example, color would be the key and a value would be like red or blue or a hexadecimal value. Um, and you can usually write HTML inline, I mean CSS inline or HTML file, but it's usually recommended to keep it separate in uh, its own .css file and link the two together because it makes your code cleaner and just easier to read overall. And of course, I'll show you how to link it and what it really means as we go into the demo. And of course, last but not least, the JavaScript basics. Um, JavaScript adds functionality to your page. Um, so again, another example, let's say you want to go purchase a product on Apple's site. Like if you wanted to spend money on an iPhone, uh, you know, before they charge you a thousand dollars, you have to put in your credit card information and other things. Uh, when you hit submit, 
Uh, usually that processing is done by JavaScript to send your nice credit card information to whichever server it needs to go for processing. Um, not necessarily the processing itself is done by JavaScript, but it's more like preparing your data to be sent. That's done by JavaScript. Um, this can be written again in an HTML file, but usually it's better to put it in a JS file. Uh, JavaScript can also be used to stylize your page too. Um, if you might, you might be familiar with the things like React or Angular. Uh, I'm not too familiar with either of those, but I know at React we use uh, React for my internship, and you can create animation stylings and really cool things with React. Unfortunately, that is something I don't know, so I cannot share that with you guys right now. But I am going to learn it, so maybe we can all figure that out together. Or if you know React, maybe you could help us learn it. Hint, hint. <laughs> all right. Um, and this is just going to be more general tips to making appealing web pages. Um, at its roots, web design is more of an art form. Uh, I feel like web design is a lot less about programming and more about art, <laughs> which might sound intimidating, but it's truly not. Uh, and it, when it really comes to it, as long as your web page is structured, it's a good website. Um, there's, pretty, there's pretty good examples of bad websites out there, but most websites are structured as they have like a nav bar on the top or a header. Uh, they have blocks of content with like images and text and other various things. Um, the colors are usually simple. Like uh, again, Apple site is usually just black and gray. Uh, some other sites might just be like a light blue color. Um, YouTube is either all white or all black, depending on if you use light theme or dark theme or not. Um, and the colors just aren't too distracting. They're easy on the eyes because this is, you essentially want to be easy on the eyes. You know, you want your site to be appealing and welcoming. And emphasize, I mean, emphasis is always placed where it needs to be. I'm sorry, I put you in my grammar. But um, you want to put emphasis on things you want the user to pay attention to. So like, if you want someone to read like a text box, you might want to give it like a nice image to go along with it, um, just to show emphasis on that. Um, example of that would be seeing advertisements on a site. Usually they're in its own corner on the side, tucked away, usually. <laughs> That's a good example of keeping emphasis where you need it to be. You want it to be on the content, not on the ads. So ads should be on the side, not in the middle, though some people do it still. <laughs> um, and of course, keep your navigation simple. Um, we're gonna go over how to uh, make a simple navigation bar. You want it to be, in a word, in a phrase, I guess, less is better when it comes to navigation. You shouldn't have like 80 buttons to go to different sites. At most, try to keep everything as on one page as possible with of course making sense. Um, with the page we're gonna be making, we're gonna have four, but you could relatively shrink that down to one or two. Uh, two. Um, you'll see that once we get into the demo. And speaking of the demo, it's actually demo time. <laughs> so um, if you wanna follow along with this demo, you can. Um, unfortunately, with it being online, it will be harder to help people out um, but if you do have questions, I will be posting this on GitHub, uh, the entire code base. I also will be sticking around to help, you know, in case anyone wants any kind of help. And yeah, you'll also need something to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in. You can do it in anything, really. Um, oh yeah, Emily will also be here for a bit too. Um, you can write your HTML or CSS or JavaScript code in really anything. Uh, I recommend using Visual Studio's code. Uh, it works on any uh, system, so whether you're Mac or Windows, it's fine. Uh, if you're on Windows, you could use Notepad++. It's a bit bare bones, but it does get the job done. But that's only Windows only, so I uh, can't help you there. I'll be using Dreamweaver, which is a more powerful uh, web development tool. It's, for, it's not free, um, but if you use on the hub, you can get it for like $20 a month, you can get the entire Adobe suite. Um, so if that's something you wanna do, you can. So we're gonna do a couple things first before we get started. First off, we need to make a directory that will house our site. So for me, I'm gonna make it in this uh, software engineering club folder, if it opens. Um, not gonna make it in test because they're all testing. So I'm just gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call it uh, resume, because that's simple. Um, we're gonna create it here. There's gonna be nothing in here, but we're gonna make another folder called images. Well, I'm going to, but uh, if you wanna follow along, I will put um, images in the chat um, if you need them. 
you're going to need images to download if you want to follow along. Um, Emily, if you could go on the exact chat, get the images, please. That would be nice. <laughs> but uh, if you can't, then again, they'll be on GitHub. But inside, so what you should have is a folder that we called resume to house a site in and a folder in that called images. Uh, that's all you need right now. And with that being said, we're going to start making our HTML file. So open your source editor or code source code editor. For me, it'll be Dreamweaver. Take its time. Um, don't mind all the bells and whistles. It's really not necessary. Um, we can create a new file or new project. For me, it'll be HTML. Make sure it's HTML5. Yeah, it is HTML5. Make sure it's HTML5. All you just need to do is create HTML file and hit create. Um, you can do this a command line. You can do touch uh, index.html. So I'm going to save this only fast as index.html. I'm going to go find my folder. Resume. And it's very crucial that you name your a uh, landing page or homepage index.html. This is actually required. It needs to be named index.html or else uh, if you want to host this somewhere, it won't really work. <laughs> uh, once you got it saved, then we're good to go. Um, we can start off by typing the following tag and you can do HTML then head. Uh, HTML is needed too. This basically just defines the HTML page uh, it's put in pretty much every site. Uh, after that, you want to put a head, which defines a header. This doesn't define like an on-site header. This is more like uh, data for your site. We're going to talk about what these two mean. Uh, let's start with title. Title means what it says. It's the title of your page. So um, you can give this your name. So I'll do Dorian Brim. And what this is, is basically, if you ever go into a site, uh, let's go open one. Uh, let's go on apple.com using them. Uh, see, in the, see in the tab where it says apple.com? Well, that's because if you look at their page source, um, or maybe not. <laughs> no, we're not looking at their page source. Oh, no, right here. Their title is Apple. That's a lot of page source. So that's where your browser gets the name of the site. Right there. <laughs> so if you don't have a name there, it will just be blank, or Google might try to put something in there. I don't really know what happens if you leave it blank. But uh, you can put your name there for now. Um, meta specifies metadata for your site. Um, you you want to specify meta char site equals UTF-8. Uh, this is pretty much just like the character set that we use. This is pretty standard. I don't think I've never seen this been changed before. I don't see a reason to change it. I don't even think you need it and it'll still be fine. But uh, it's still a good idea to have. Um, Another good example of metadata, and I don't know how people know this, but if you ever go on Google, uh, let's go on Google. So google.com, let's Google, uh, that's Microsoft, let's try someone different, uh, Microsoft. Uh, do you ever wonder where Google gets this information from? Like what to put in the description? Uh, well, one of its sources, I don't know everything about Google, but one of them is through its metadata. Uh, there's a metadata on its site called description. If we look on Microsoft, uh, not this one, where is it at? Where you hiding? There. If you look here, there's a meta, a metadata called description, and it's the exact same thing that's on Google's page. <laughs> so this is, this is how other browsers get your, or other sites get data about your site. Um, hopefully this is how they get data about your site. Uh, there could be other ways, but again, I don't work at Google. I don't know what they do, but I know that this is where a majority of people get their data about other sites from is with metadata. There's other stuff here. We can see there's some Twitter stuff here. I'm not really sure what Microsoft and Twitter are doing, but there's stuff here. Um, at the end of the day, this stuff usually doesn't get displayed on the web page. It's just there just to be there. Um, we also want to close our, our title tag. We could do that by putting an angle bracket and a uh, slash and just put the name of the tag and close it out. Uh, same thing for head. We're done with our head. We can close that tag out. And now is the next important tag, which is just body. And that means pretty much what's actually going to be displayed on the page. So everything that's in body 
will show up on the page in some way. Um, this is pretty much where people are going to see, and this is where all the art slash magic happens. Um, which, of course, we will get started now. Um, we can do a couple of things with this, but for now, we're just going to make one div tag. Um, and we're going to call this div tag header. Um, or this div tag will be our header. So we're going to do div, and we want to make an opening tag. So just do angle bracket div, and then a closing angle bracket, and then another one with a slash in it, and then div again. Uh, that's how you just create div tag. Um, before I continue, am I going too fast? Anyone have any questions they want to ask? Um, before I just keep going. No? No questions? All right, cool, cool. Good to know. Oops. Okay, so. You have uh, one question. Oh, I do. My bad. Is that yeah, chat? Just posted. Ah, I see. Chat. Uh, okay, so we want to use a div tag because div tags help us separate our page in the blocks of content. So uh, remember how I said everything is either a block or inline? Um, if I went and typed stuff in here now, it would all show up in line. Even if I press enter, still in line. That's just how web pages work. But with div tags, what we can do is, uh, I think Google has a div tag here you can look at. Uh, I'm sure I can do it this way. Uh, inspect. Uh, come on. No. Yeah. So here, Google's logo is contained in a div tag. And you can see how big their tag is. It's uh, 655 by 238 pixels. And they're allowed to center this, this logo anywhere they want to. So it allows them to position their site better rather than just in line. Um, that's what makes div tags useful and what makes them like the building box for website or web development. Did that answer your question? Um, I don't think you can use live view on Visual Studio's code, but we will get into how to view your site. Um, we'll get to view your site once we put content on it. It's not hard at all. Um, it's pretty simple, actually. We'll show you how to do it. Cool. So again, uh, let's put our div tag back. And we're going to give it a class. And we're going to go over classes are once uh, and very shortly, actually. Um, so we just do class and then equals, and then every class thing goes in quotes. Uh, double quotes is recommended, but um, we're going to give it call. We're going to call it header, and we're calling it header because this will be our header tag. This will contain everything we're putting in a header. So it, in our case, this will be our nav bar and our logo. Um, and that's pretty much it for that one. But if we actually try to look at it, um, which I'll show you how to do. If you go to wherever you saved your file at, if you look for your index.html, if you just click it, it opens in whichever browser you choose. So for me, it, you see the file path name, um, and this is what your site looks like right now. But um, I know someone asks how to see your site. This is how you would do it if you don't have a powerful uh, web developer tool. But you can see we don't really see anything. And we didn't really put anything down. We made a div tag, which is a block, but we don't see a block. And you might be wondering why we don't see a block. Well, that's where CSS comes in handy. HTML did its job. It placed a block on the page, but the block is zero by zero and has no color. And there's nothing in it. So we don't see anything. And that's why we gave it a class so we can see everything. So what we need to do is create a CSS sheet. So um, you can do the following, or I'm pretty sure you can do it in the Visual Studio's code, but if you're not using that, um, you can do touch. Um, we're gonna call it test.css or style.css actually. Um, so for me, I can go create a CSS sheet from here. Um, and we're gonna save it as uh, let's call it, we'll call it test, test.css. Um, that's why you need to the name is just test.css um, and save it on the, in the same directory as your index.html file. Um, it's not really crucial that you do it, but it makes our life easier if you do it. So now we have an HTML file and a CSS file. 
Excuse me. So what we need to do is give our header class some styling. And that's exactly what we want to do. You can define a new class that you've specified in your HTML file and CSS by doing a period, period, and the name of the class. So for me, it'd be dot header, and then to uh, set up opening and closing curly braces. And inside these curly braces is where you put your content in. Um, you might have seen my sense come up. Uh, these are all keys or different key value pairs that you can use for CSS. Um, so right now, what we want to do is give it a height and a width so we can see it. Um, we're going to give it a width of, let's say, 100%. And you put a sudden colon at the end of CSS uh, key value pairs. And what this will do is it will take the, the div tag will always be 100% of the page. So this div tag will span from the very leftmost to rightmost spot of our page. And we want to give it a height of, let's say, 75 px. And that just means 75 pixels. So it's going to be 75 pixels tall. Now, now if we save this and we try to look, we still don't really see anything. And that's because we didn't really link our, our CSS and HTML sheet together. So these two files exist, but they don't know that they exist. So we need to help our file know that it exists. And you might be wondering, how do we do that? It's pretty simple. Um, within the header tag, or the head tag, I'm sorry, you want to make a link tag. So if you just type link, you want to type a link, and then do href, href, and then equals with some quotes, and then the name of your uh, style sheet. So it should be test.css, or uh, whichever you named it. I did not type that right. No. Test.css. And we want to specify what kind of relationship this is. So we will say REL, which stands for relationship. And our relationship to this file is a style sheet, which you can just type style sheet, all one word. I don't know why my thing is not working. Style sheet. Wow. You're just really going to make me type today. Hmm. Okay. But yeah. And we want to put a closing angle bracket. We don't have to close the link tag out. Um, because it's not anything that goes on the page or gets displayed anywhere. But what this will do is this will link our reference sheet, I mean, our styling sheet with our HTML page. And the relationship is a style sheet. So if we look at this now, or refresh this. Eh. Eh. If we uh, look at this now, still can't really see anything. Um, and that's obviously because the color is white. So let's give it a color so we can see what this page looks like or what our tag will look like or how much space it takes up. Uh, we can do that with background color. So background dash color. And we can give it a color. The color is totally up to you. Um, you can specify by typing in the literal name of the color, like red or dark red or dark golden rod. I don't know what color that is. Or you can give the hexadecimal value for the color. Um, I prefer hex values, um, but you can use the regular card name if you want to. Hex values give you more freedom. Um, so I'm going to use 2577C4, which is this weird blue color. Uh, we can save that. And, oh, oops, I have two. And I should not be having two here. Yeah. I think I'm looking at the wrong sheet. Uh -huh. So just one second. We're gonna browse this one. Why are you still open? Hmm. I think my thing is glitching out. Hold on, let me restart this. It sometimes bugs out the last time I was working on it. There we go. So yeah, sorry about that. Dreamweaver bugs out sometimes, it's not the best program. But we see here, we have our, what will soon be our navigation bar. Um, it's blue 
or whichever color you'll be. If you choose red, it'll be red. But um, right now we can see that it's blue. Um, get this out of the way. Um, if we look at it, it looks pretty plain. Um, and you might notice something that's odd and stands out. Uh, if we go look at our page, you might see it better. Let me just save this and open our index file. Notice how it doesn't take up the top and uh, the left and right sides of the screen. It's like, sort of like there's a padding between it. Um, we don't want this because we wanted to, remember, we wanted to take up 100% of the page. And as we scroll our thing up and down, we see that it takes up 100% of the page. But it's like there's something here stopping it from getting that little bit of space that we want. And that's because there is something there stopping us from getting what we want. Um, every page has a built-out margin by default. I don't know what the values are by default, unfortunately. I think it's like one. Um, but every page has a default margin. And we can get rid of this margin with CSS. Um, with with every file, I mean, every HTML file, there is a, the entire file is its own class. So in a way, if that makes sense. So we can reference this class by doing star and putting in two brackets as if it was its own class. Um, you might be familiar that star means all. Uh, technically this would affect, it wouldn't affect every class, rather it affects the entire page. So uh, we can get rid of the margin on the page by doing margin um, zero pixels. And as you see, our margin goes away. You can see it happening live on my thing, but um, you'd have to save to see it. If you get rid of it, it comes back. And just for safekeeping, we can also get rid of the padding. Uh, we can type padding um, and also zero pixels. Um, for me, I don't think there's padding by default on Chrome but I believe other browsers have padding on by default. Um, again, we can get rid of it. So now it looks the same on every page. And if we take a look at our file again, that's why I save it. Uh, if you take a look at our save it, take a look at the file again, we see that now it takes up the entire page, which is what we want, nice and clean. Next off, we're going to give this header some content. But if you remember our discussion from before, everything is either inline or block. So if we don't, if we just type stuff here, it'll show up inline. And that's not really what we want. We want, we want a logo that just could be whatever we want, our name, for instance, or maybe if you designed your own logo, you will want that there. We can have our logo or, and our nav bar. And we need to give these elements its own div tag, its own block to work with. And we can do that pretty simple, simply, uh, by inside of this div tag right here, we can add another div tag. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we have another div tag. This one we're gonna give a class. We're gonna call it nav header, nav underscore header, not van, nav underscore header. And what this will do is it'll create another div tag. And of course, it'll have no width or height or color. So we don't see anything. But it technically does have a color um, because these this div tag being inside of the other div tag have a child parent relationship. So this div tag takes up most of the, most if not all of the attributes of the parent. So that's why it doesn't show up as a white block on the page. It has a it has the color, and it also has the width and the height. So it's technically there, in the same length, but we can't really see it because it's the same. So we're just going to have to apply some CSS to make it different. Um, actually, that brings me to another point. Something else I should have probably talked about beforehand, but um. With CSS, there's two different kinds of uh, ways to give uh, class class names to elements. They can be a class like we see here, or they can be an ID. Like if we change the nav header to ID, this is also valid. And there's a key difference between class and ID that is important to know. So you can assign multiple tags or multiple elements that have a class. Like these both can have the same class header but there can only be one element that has an ID. 
So if I use nav header here, I can't use any other element having nav header. And you might be wondering why you want to do this. Typically, it's faster because there's only one element that could have it, less to load. Um, and it also just helps for organization. This would show that to programmers that this is the only object that will be using this or element that be using this ID. And in our case, we only want our local container, this will contain our logo, to use this ID. So this is why we give it an ID. And in CSS, we specify IDs by using the pound sign or the hashtag symbol. Um, so we do hashtag that header. And it's the same sort of process. They act the same as classes. They all have the same properties, um, except that it's only going to be used by one element and no more. So now we can specify our own heights and widths for our nav header. Uh, we're going to give it a height uh, 100%. And this will take, remember what we did with 100%, it took up 100% of the page. Well, in other words, it took up 100% of the parent. So our parent, the parent class for the header tag was the entire web page. So the 100% of the width would be the entire page. So now that our nav header is parent, its parent is the nav bar itself, 100% of the height will be 75 pixels, which would be the height of this navigation bar. Same, and with the width, we don't want to specify 100% of the width because remember, this will only contain our logo. So we want it to be a set size. Um, and this set size can be like 350 pixels. That should be good enough. Um, it does not need a color. So it's going to inherit the color of our nav page. I mean, our nav bar, which should make sense. We will give it a margin though for safekeeping. What margin does is it creates some spacing between the element and whatever's next to it. Um, padding does the same thing, except the padding goes inside of the tag. So the padding creates more space inside the tag and margin creates more space outside the tag. So we want to create more space outside the tag and to the right side of it. So we can do margin dash right and we can give that, let's say 50 pixels. And I can uh, show you how this works once uh, you get it going. So I can save, um, we see our nav header now. Uh, I don't know if you can, yeah, there you go. It's orange. And if we uh, type some content in here, uh, how much content do I have to type to get to the right side? Probably a lot. Uh, I'm gonna type a bunch of stuff in here so we can get to the right side. Come on. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So if you look near this S, it's really small. But there is some space here that another character could fit, but it's not fitting there. That's because of our margin. If we were to get rid of it, uh, like that. Mm, I did not fit. Oh, did I save it? Uh, it doesn't want to fit. Oh, text is weird. But essentially, that'll create some spacing between our page. Oh, let's get rid of that. I don't need that here. Um, margin and padding is important. It makes your page, it gives them more space to actually filling content in. It's just, it's, it's always beneficial to use when you want to make your page spaced out better, fill up your space more. Um, the best way to fill up space is to space things out. <laughs> it's also not the key thing you should learn. Um, now we're going to put an image in our uh, header. So we can do this by using the IMG tag or image tag. Um, we can do IMG, and within that, we want to do SRC, which stands for source. Um, and this will specify a source for us. So we can do equals. Now, remember how I said to create an image file or image folder? Um, this is where we'll be storing all of our images. So um, if you followed along, uh, there should be an image thing in chat somewhere that Emily might have posted. Um, that would be the images we're using. Uh, if you don't have it, um, you can't really follow along with this. Um, I don't even think I have it, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't have it myself. So I need to get that. I'm going to bring it from my test folder. It's in Discord, too. Ah, yeah, it is in Discord. So they should be called logo.png and referenceimage.png. Um, that's the only two we'll be using. I'm just going to move them into my images folder. But if you don't have them, yeah, you do need to unzip it. Um, 
you should be able to do that with Windows or Mac. Uh, it's not zipped with any special program. It's the default one that comes with it. Um, you just need to you unzip them and move them into move the two images into your folder into your image folder and you should be fine. All right, I'll try to bring that chat back over here. Maybe I won't because it disappeared. I'll check it out. Anyway, um, so within source, we want to specify the directory to our files. There's two ways you can specify directories. Um, you can do it by absolute, which is where you type out the entire path length. So if you're a Windows, it'd be like C, uh, your C drive, Windows users, desktop. I don't really know how Windows file system works all that well, but um, you could do that. On Mac OS, it'd be like user as your name, uh, desktop, wherever you have it saved. Um, but you can also do it relatively. So the SRC relativeness will start from whichever uh, wherever file you're currently writing in is saved. So since our index file is saved in our project folder, it knows that it's going to start looking at um, our folder. So we have our images folder here. There's images and we want to put logo.png and that'll create, uh, that'll put our logo here. But um, notice how it's like really big and just unsettling. This is not how we want it to go. Um, and of course, this is what CSS is for. We want to create, we want this web page or web page. We want our logo to be inside of the div tag dimensions at all times. Um, and we can do that with CSS. And we can do, and again, we can write CSS in our HTML file. And since this is relatively small amount of CSS, it's fine to put it in the HTML file. So we can do style, um, style equals quotes. And here you'll put all your CSS styles that, that you can use in CSS will work in the style attribute here. So we can do max height, which will set the maximum height for the image here. We want it to be, uh, let's say 80% of the div tag that it's currently in. So we just do that by saying 80%. Uh, we put a semicolon to mark the end of that attribute. And then uh, that should be good. We want to give it some margins too, just to keep it, you know, spaced out nice and evenly. We'll give it a margin on the left and at the top. So margin left, we can say it's going to be 10%. And what this means is that there's always going to be 10% amount of space around the left side. And we want to do percent wise because users can resize the window at any time. So as the page gets smaller, we want to take up less and less space. Um, same thing for our top sides. We're not going to have a percent wise at the top. Our margin top attribute is just going to be eight pixels because no one's usually resizing a page top and bottom. And at that point, it's okay to cut things off. Um, there's no closing tags for images. So you can just leave that angle bracket as is and it should be fine. Now, there's also one thing that we need to touch on too while we're here. Uh, this might, you might not get any issues with Visual Studio's code, but, um, this is a thing that could happen. Let's say someone had, there was an issue getting this image and it wouldn't load. Now, if that did happen, there wouldn't be a logo here and it would just be an empty space with nothing there. That might be bad for your site viewers. So you have the option to specify an alternative, uh, alternative file. So, or alternative like thing to put here. It could be text or a file, it could be anything. Um, you can do that by typing alt and doing equals with quotes again. And we can specify a file or we can put a word here, like logo here. So what will happen, let's say, uh, let's just rename this file so we can't see it no more. Uh, this file doesn't exist, so it's gone. And Dreamer is not reapplying my thing. Why are you doing this to me? I'm going to restart it again. Sorry. Dreamweaver is being really annoying today. Yeah. So we see that it says logo here. And this is the error for not being able to find an image. Um, if we were to view that, it's same thing. Logo here. And we can see our margin, by the way, that we added. So that's the helpfulness of that. Um, it's very useful. I don't remember the name of this file. I think it was logo. 
key. Yeah. And we can see it's taking up the width of, it fits in our div, in our div tag, which is what we wanted, as you can see here. There's our left margin and you know, there's no, there's a little bit of a top margin, it's like eight pixels, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's, it's there. Um, and that's the header for our nav bar logo. Now we want to add another element to our nav bar and that's going to be, you know, the actual navigation tool. So we can do that again by specifying another div. We'll open chat really fast. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Okay. So we can specify another div tag. Um, we're going to give this an ID because this will only be used by the div tag. I mean, by the navigation bar. And we're going to call it nav bar, nav underscore bar. And close out the div tag. And we're going to apply some CSS to it. So, um, what we need to do is underneath here, we can do pound sign again and nav bar. And we want to do a couple of things. Well, we want to do a couple of things with the nav bar. But uh, we need to be a bit careful. So the way we want this to work is there's going to be four different elements in our nav bar, which will act as links. They're going to be home, content, GitHub, and accomplishments. So each of those four links is going to be its own element. And then that element will be sitting inside of another element. All four of those will be sitting in one group. And then that group will be in another div tag. So there's going to be like three nested tags here. Um, it sounds complicated, but it actually isn't once you see it. So for now, we can just put a height of 100%. And we could put a width of 900 pixels. Um, and what this will do is create a nav bar. But we see, remember again, how I said everything is either blocked or inline. So even though this is in here, we have a problem where um, it's not positioned where we want it to be. And we can do that and we can fix that relatively simply. If I could get that back, here we go. We can fix it simply with, um, again, some more CSS. But you might be wondering what we need to do to get it to work. Um, we need to apply some styling to our header that tells it how to display things inside the page. Because by default, it'll try to do everything in line. Block elements will be displayed in line too. But these could be manipulated to display in any way we really want to. So we need to modify our header, which is this thing, our header div tag, to display things in one line. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Um, but I prefer using something called Flexbox with CSS. Flexbox allows you to allows you to display block elements or box elements um, in a way where it can dynamically change based on the web page size and formation. So you can see an example of that once we get this working. But uh, for now, we can just do display and set that to flex. Again, with a semicolon to close it out. And now what this will do is we specify that we want to display our page with Flexbox. And uh, we can add anything that we want in there. Um, to answer your question, Mahmoud, um, what should I expect from transitioning from Java to HTML, CSS, or JavaScript? Um, Java, HTML and CSS not really like programming languages like Java. Um, JavaScript and Java are pretty similar. Um, HTML is when CSS are more about structure, and JavaScript is probably as close to object-oriented as you're going to get like Java. Um, you should, have, you should have an easier experience with them, but if you're really familiar with Java, it might be, excuse me, it might be hard to catch on to, but it's relatively simple. Um, but there's not much difference between uh, JavaScript and Java. You'll see once we type it um, or type some stuff out. Fundamentally, they're sort of the same, but not by too much. No. I hope that answered your question. Um, so, we want to specify different things. Uh, this will allow us to see some more CSS content. Like we get something called flex wrap. And flex wrap will wrap the contents 
um, this, the, it tells us how to wrap our content. So right now it's inline, but if we specify no wrap, what this will do is it'll keep everything um, on this line, no matter what the circumstances. Um, I spelled wrap wrong. There we go. And that's sort of what we want. And we can also do things like justify the content. And what this means, so justify dash content. What's this, what this means is this will tell us uh, what alignment the content should have. So if you're familiar with aligning text, you can do left align, middle align, right align. We can do um, center align with stuff here. We can like left align with flex start. We can do right align with flex end. Or we get some other helpful things like keeping even the amount of space around it or between it. Um, we want space between our elements to be roughly the same. So we can do space between, space dash between. And this will basically create some space between our element. Um, we're also gonna add two things or one thing. Uh, we're gonna add a Z index. Just, just for organizational purposes, this will, we're gonna set it to negative two. And what this will do is this will keep the header, oh, not negative, I'm sorry, positive two. This will keep the header on top of all the content. And you might wonder why that's necessary. Uh, you'll see very shortly on why we want to do that. But uh, if we save it and look for our nav bar, we see that it's in line and it's on the page uh, right here. Uh, there's space between, if I can find the other one, there's space between this bar and this bar, which is what we want. Uh, we also get a scroll bar. Don't worry, we'll be fixing that. Uh, that won't be saying. Unless I type the dimension wrong. Type the 351 by accident, no. Okay. Um, get rid of this. No, get away. Okay. Um, but yeah. So this is, we accomplished what we wanted. We have our space for our logo and a space for our navigation. Now, we need to create uh, the navigation bar itself. Now we can do this with something called a nav tag. And I'm going to go over what the nav tag really is. If you type na uh, you know, nav NAV, um, you'll create a nav tag, but it nav tag doesn't really do anything specific. All it really is, is it's just a tag. It's just a div tag with a name pretty much. Um, so when you see this, you know, this is going to be navigation context. Again, this is pretty evident by our header, uh, by our ID and the div tag that's in this as nav bar. But the reason why we want to specify this nav tag, which is pretty much a div tag in another container of a div tag, is because we can apply certain elements to it. So like, uh, if we want, like the CSS elements we apply to our div tag, like display the flex, that would not work with nav tags. Flexbox only works with div tags. So that's why we keep it in a div tag and we put the nav inside of there. Um, a lot of this is, this goes for a lot of other tags. You might see like article section. Those are all like, are, these are all just named div tags, but they don't have div tag capabilities. Um, so they're really just there for naming. But uh, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another div tag. And this div tag will contain all of our navigation tools. So like the home, contact, GitHub, and accomplishments I was talking about earlier, that's where this will be. So we can give it a div. It'll be an ID because it's only going to use by, be used by our this one thing. And we're going to call it nav container. And this is just going to contain all of the elements for navigation. So what we want to do here is we want to specify our elements here. So we want, remember I said we want four tags here or four navigation links. Uh, they're going to be home, I don't want to type these. They're going to be home, content, I mean contact, GitHub, and accomplishments. And we can achieve that by doing div tags pretty much because we want to apply some special CSS to these. But um, we can do a div tag, and this will be a class. We give it a class called nav elements because these will these traits will be shared against all four of the nav elements. So nav elements, and we can just specify 
uh, home and I'll just copy and paste these for uh, these tags three times. So we can change the name to be git no, contact, sorry, contact. And then we'll do it again with git hub and again with accomplishments. Okay, so we have that. Notice how to stack top to bottom. Again, that's because of it's taking the flexibilities from the parent class. That's how you have it in a container so we can apply some other flex uh, capabilities to it. So let's go ahead and do that in CSS. We can go add another CSS class called, uh, I'll get out of the way, called nav elements, what we just created. Oh, sorry, no, not nav elements, nav container. We're doing that one first. Nav container. Yeah. And what we're going to put here, <coughs> excuse me, is a height. We want to be 75 pixels. That's the entire width of this tag, or uh, this nav bar. Um, we want to give it a margin on the right of 5%. So on the right side of our page, will be like right here. Um, when we shrink it, it'll get smaller and smaller to take up less space as the page gets smaller. And we want to apply a display to this too. That display is going to be flex. It almost always will be flex. <laughs> Um, and we're going to justify this content by spacing it evenly. And we're going to watch, see how, I should probably point this out. See how it went from being stacked together like its parent does to being in line because by default, it goes flexes in line. When we specify no wrap, that bypass that. And we can do justify content and we can do space evenly, which is not a default inside of type in evenly. And this will create space evenly between the accomplishments and I mean our nav elements. And if we open this up, if we save it and open this up, uh, save it. If we save and open this up and we shrink it, we see that it maintains the same amount of space no matter how small our page is until you're under some more space, there's not much space left. And notice the margin, how it disappears. And as the page gets bigger, the margin becomes bigger. This is what we want. Same thing if we do it this way, um, it's still squishing. Now, that's the beauty of flex and that's what makes it amazing. Um, that's pretty much it for the container. The container is fine. Now we can go ahead and work with our individual nav elements. So if we make another CSS class called nav elements, again, we did that with a div, we can apply a couple of different things here. So of course, we want to display this as flex too, because there's gonna be text here. We want to display this inline text differently. So we're just gonna give it flex for now because we'll be working with it. Um, we can give it a line item center. This is another flex box thing. Um, you might be wondering why we didn't use justify content for this one this time. Well, we plan on putting text here. So text is not like a text is an inline element. It's in which pretty much means it's not a block, it's an item. So we justify content won't work for items. It only works for block elements. So align items works for inline elements. So this will center it like so. I'm gonna go ahead and reach out really fast. Mind elements aren't on the blue header for some reason. Um did you did you want to which nav is it like just the uh just the navigation links like a home and content um if so make sure that your nav header class which i will find right here or nav container has display flex and justify content space evenly and make sure that your nav uh that? not your nav your header also has this display uh, flex and no wrap. Um, it needs this in order to properly format it. Um, and we'll be aligning these items center, by the way. So we have both. 
uh, make sure, are, are your sizes correct? It should be 100% of the width, 75% of the height for the header. The nav header should be 100% and 350. Um, but if that does not work, I can work with you. I know flex can be a bit weird sometimes, but uh, I can work with you. But um, yeah. So um, just for safekeeping, in case you want to do something on your own time, we're also going to justify content center. So if you add your own things, they'll center up here too. Be aligned with our text. Get rid of chat. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, now we have aligned text. It's aligned. Um, but it doesn't really look good. It's, it's Times New Roman, it's black, it's not fitting anything. So we need to go apply some font changes. Um, to change the font, you can do font-family. And this is going to be really weird because, um, I'm sorry, I'm still going to chat. You know if elements are under the blue header. Hmm. Um, again, we can make sure that your tags are all proper and your display contents are all the same. If they're not, they won't fit. So that does need to be a thing. But uh, back onto the font. So we can apply font changes by uh, just typing in the name of the font here. As long as it's installed, it'll be fine. But there's one thing that most people don't think about when designing web pages is what happens if the user doesn't have a font installed? So you want to specify multiple fonts so that way the page can load and still look decently good. And you should do it in, in an order so that um, the first font you have is going to be the one that shows up and the last one is going to be like their last resort font if they don't have it. So for instance, I'm going to do a uh, Helvetica New, which is Apple's default font. Um, and then another font. Uh, I'll do regular Helvetica. Uh, you can see it's already applying Helvetica Nui to it. Um, I'll do Arial because who doesn't have Arial? And if somehow you don't have Arial, our last resort is Times New Roman. New. And Let's say I let's say you didn't have Helvetica installed. It will result that's Arial. It looks the same. Um, it will resort to Arial, but if you didn't have Arial installed, for some reason, it resorts to Times New Roman. So that's the goal of having multiple font families specified. Is because if someone doesn't have a font installed, it still can display content. You can display as many as you want. I just went with four because who doesn't have Arial or Times New Roman? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we can specify the size of the font by doing font size. Um, we can make it 24 pixels. And as you see, it grows to 24 pixels. Um, we can make it bold so it looks bigger and easier to read by doing font weight. And you can specify a number. You can literally type in bold too. Oops, that's not type bold. Bold. It becomes bolded. And... Of course, we can give it a color. And we want the color to be white because it's easier to read and it matches the logo here thing that we don't actually have a logo for. But um, if there's a logo, you'd want it to be white. <laughs> so um, just looking at the nav thing, I wanna show you guys. So the nav tag will is a container pretty much. Um, it's just a name. You want to have another container here called div id nav container. And that one goes inside of this one. And then all of these are its own little thing. Just in case, you know, you don't have that. Yeah, yeah this video will be uploaded on YouTube. And the code will also be on GitHub. So you guys can look over that too. And you can also work on it to improve it, make it better, make it your own. So yeah. Um, we can specify a color. Remember I said we can type in the actual name of the color, like white. Or we can put the hexadecimal value, which is just six Fs in a row <laughs> with the pound sign, of course. Um, and we can also give it a margin too. 
a margin on the left and the right, just give some extra spacing. Margin right, we can do 10 pixels and margin left can also be 10 pixels. And now we have nav elements. But uh, they don't actually work and we can make them work. We're making two of them work today. Um, we're gonna make the home one work, although you won't visually see it working because this is the home page. And we'll make the GitHub one work. Um, if you wanna make the contact and accomplishes one work, I hope you can use what you learn from here to make that work. Um, but making these work is relatively simple. Um, when it comes down to it, when you click on the home tag, what should happen is you want this to take you back to this page. And for GitHub, you want this to go to whichever GitHub page you have. So there are two different links, but they work fundamentally different. So, or fundamentally the same, I'm sorry. Uh, we can specify links with literally an A tag. So um, angle bracket A, um, and then you do href like we did for linking and then equals and we specify the HTML file we want to load. So we want to load index.html when we click the home page. Um, we want to give it some styling too. So we can do that inline on the HTML file because it's pretty simple styling. Uh, display, we're going to get this on a block display, not flex. It'll be a block display uh, because we want this to display as a block content, not inline. That's why I added the justify content. So now it's a block. Um, we want the text decoration to be none. What text decoration is, is if you know, a, if you ever see like a link, it has like an underline underneath it, like a hyperlink. We don't want that because that doesn't, that will look weird with a thing. You don't really see it, but uh, because this doesn't actually take us anywhere, but we don't want that underline. So if we put none, text decoration, none, it gets rid of it. Um, and that's pretty much it for that styling. Um, and now we put a closing A tag out on this side of the div tag. So, oops. So how this should work is you should have an A tag here and that closing one should not be there. And there should be a div tag here. Um, why did that break? Oh, wait, sorry. I don't know why I broke it. Excuse me. We are going to look for it. I think I forgot it. Um, looking for it, looking for it. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I forgot to specify a height. The height should be 100%. My bad. There we go. And as you see here, it fits. Um, if you hover over it on your page, if you save this, um, you can tell that this will work. If you hover over it, notice how your thing turns to a pointer when you go over the div, div tag size. And if you click it, you see that it like loads really fast. You're back to your home page. There's nothing else really here though. So you can't, you don't see it working, but it's working. If you add other pages here, then you go back to home, it'll take you back to the home page. Um, looking through chat really fast. Okay. So we want to do the same thing with the GitHub link. Um, we're going to do this the same way. So if we, we really just copy and paste uh, the A tag we have here, oh, wrong slot, that we have here and put it with the GitHub one. And of course, a closing A on the end. Uh, let's get rid of the text decoration styling really fast. See, this is that purple line I was talking about that we don't want. If we get rid of text, if we put text duration to none, it gets rid of that. And this link is going to be to an actual website. So um, if we go to, we can get a GitHub link. So I'm going to go to my GitHub, uh, which is ZWriter. Um, you can copy this link and paste it on the href. And that'll make your link go to GitHub. So um, I make sure I save this. Okay. If we open this up and I click on the GitHub, like anywhere on the GitHub, it'll take me to GitHub. Um, and that's how that works. Um, you can specify files or links. As long as the site is up and running, it should work. 
Um, cool. But we want to try something. Um, let's try to animate our tabs here so they actually like hover. When we have our cursor over them, they flash different colors so we know that it's clickable. Um, the pointer's there, but that doesn't really help us. It looks very static and not something that we really like. Um, we can change this by applying some pretty cool CSS to our thing. So uh, you can apply different elements or different classes or functions or listeners to your uh, CSS. So we can apply one called hover on our nav elements. So if you make another stanza, we can do nav elements or dot nav elements dot hover or colon hover, I'm sorry, colon hover. And what this will do is this will apply some more CSS whenever our cursor is hovering over the links. So for example, for this one, let's say we wanna change our background color uh, to be whatever color you want, really. Uh, it should be relatively dark. It should be darker than uh, your navbar header, or if your navbar header is dark, it should be lighter than your navbar header. You want it to be the opposite brightness of whatever your navbar is. So for me, that would be like a dark blue. So I'm gonna do um, 1D, 4F, uh, 7F, yeah. Uh, that's this color. And what we want to do as well is change the text decoration to be underlined. So right now we don't have any by default, but if we do text decoration and underline, this will apply an underline whenever we hover over it. So if we save, um, if you see here, nothing's really happening. Uh, you're wondering why is something happening? Well, uh, actually, I'll show it in the file too, just so you can make sure nothing's actually happening. Um, oh, no, it does happen. Hmm. Okay, well, it's happening, but it's happening really fast. Like, if you just do it, it's like instant. And as cool as that is, it's not necessarily good looking. Uh, we can apply, we can fix this by adding a transition back to the original class. So, like the nav elements class. If we do transition, we can add a transition of 0 0.3 seconds, so 0.3s. And can I do it from here? Yeah. This will apply a second to our transition. It will make it smoother. And if I do it in a file, it's, more, much, it's much more smoother in here. Uh, we can see it's smoothly applying a, a fade into our thing. Um, we also noticed that our thing is uh, our shading is way too close to our text. That's just another uh, bad thing that we don't really like because it takes away from uh, from our page. We can fix this too um, by adding padding. Um, we want the padding to be uh, wide enough. We don't we want the padding to be roughly uh a bit bigger than this but we don't want to add padding to this and we don't want to add padding because these are all different sizes it's based on a text size so it wouldn't really work the best so another way we can solve it is by setting the width of the of the uh the um, each div tag individually which you can do with inline css so if we even though we have a class here if we do style, uh, style equals uh, some quotes, we can do uh, width for um, our home could be like 80 pixels. Um, I'm gonna copy this style thing and just apply it to a different ones. So like for a nav, um, our contact, it can be style equals, let's say 110 pixels, and you can see things dynamically changing on my screen. Um, for GitHub, we can do like 100. I think 100 will be fine. Yeah, 100 should be fine. That's enough space. 100. And for accomplishments, that's a really long word. Um, we could do 220. We save it, and we applied some more padding 
just by changing the width. And it still accommodates the size of these pages, size of these uh, elements well, which again is what we wanted. Um, we're gonna add, so that's pretty much it for the header. Um, but we're gonna run into another problem, which we might not have time to get to, but uh, still would like to talk about if we can, is when we resize this, you see it's fine until we get to a certain point. It cuts off. Now this might be okay for some people, but this doesn't look professional for a header. You don't want it to cut off. So at some, at some point you wanna have like a hamburger menu up here. And if you don't know what a hamburger menu is, it's like the little three lines stacked on top of each other. You should see them on mobiles, mobile devices. Um, you want that to occur once it gets to a certain point. We can make that happen. Um, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. We'll see if we have time for it, but um, we should. It's, I hope we do. Um, but what we can do is add a container for our body. So if we find our header div tag that we close right here, uh, right here for me, want to comment it out. Um, you can comment in HTML by doing uh, an angle bracket, exclamation point, and three dashes. And that's a comment. And then add. And headers, I'm going to type this in order the header ends. And we can close it by doing three dashes and an angle bracket. I know, weird way of closing out tags, but that's how they do it. <laughs> We're going to add another container, which would be our body for our page. So if we do div, um, this will be an ID because it'll only be used by this one thing. Is con oops, sorry, oops. Container, and we cross out our div. This will add a new div tag outside of the header. So this has no attributes attached to it. It's its own thing, and we want it to display the content for our page. Um, so we're gonna do that by going to our CSS. Um, I'm gonna put a comment here. Um, in CSS, you can add comments different. Um, like how you would in, let's say something like Java or whatever language. Uh, you can do like the forward slash star uh, and header CSS dash star, like that. Um, yeah, so let's make our container ID. So this container will contain the entire, all the body for our web page. Um, you can do that just by typing a container. We now we need to give it a height and a width. So the height will always be 100% of the page. This will contain all the body. So you want it to be 100% of the page, height wise. Since this is no parent, it'll take 100% of the entire page's body with the exception of the container here. I mean, e even the exception of the container here. So if I, I'll show that. We can add a width of 1080 because we don't want to take up the entire width. We want it to be like a certain size. So 1080 pixels is standard usually. Um, and if you look at our container, if I can find it, uh, where are you hide? Where are you? I'm not sure it's probably just colored. Um, so you have a background color so we can see it really fast. Don't, you don't have to apply this color as much to see it. Red. Hmm, why are you not showing up? Did I type something wrong? Did I apply it? Or is it breaking again? Might be breaking again. It says I didn't save. Then I did. Whatever. Let's open up in the file. Uh. I don't need this. Uh. Oops. Uh. No. Hmm, doesn't want to show. Okay. Well. Either way, we still have a height and a width of 1080 pixels. Um. Make sure I spot this frame again. Okay, what we want to do now is it, it normally wouldn't show right underneath the nav bar. It would try to like place it on at the very top of the page underneath the nav bar, which is what we don't want. So we want to make it move. So, but before we can move something, we need to specify how the position of this thing will work. So there's a couple of different positions you can do. So if you just type position, um, you can get absolute, you'll get fixed, inherit, relative, or static. And sticky doesn't really work for me. I don't know why it's there. But um, I can explain all these. So absolute will just pretty much where it, it'll post in the top, the top right corner, or top left corner of the page, pretty much. 
Um, so you, if you try to move something, it'll move from respect to the top right left corner. Fixed is means it won't move at all, no matter where it is. It will just stay exactly where it is on the page, on your window at all times. Um, inherit means it'll take from the parent. So if this was in a div tag, it'll take the position of whatever that one is. Relative would be relative to the um, relative to an to where it would be placed normally. And static means it doesn't move at all. <laughs> so unlike fix where it follows you, static doesn't move. It stays where it is 100% of the time, no matter what. So we want relative. They'll be relative to the window page. That's essentially the same as top right. And we can apply top, bottom, left, and right. And top, bottom, left, and right just means move the page in the top direction, the bottom direction, left direction, or right direction. So we can move in the top direction by 75 pixels. And we do 75 pixels because our bar here is 75 pixels. Um, I actually want to apply something too over here. I'm going to show something that I think you guys will enjoy since I just brought up positioning. So uh, what if I change the header to be, let's say, fixed? Position equals fixed. Okay, so I wonder if I can show this because the thing won't work. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, come on, CSS. Uh, let's look pretty. Oops, header's there. Okay, so our header here, um, right now it's not really doing anything. You can't really tell because there's nothing here, but uh, let's say if we just add, oh, we can't, that's a lot of content to add. I'll show you later. Okay, never mind, disregard that. Um. But yeah, so what else we want to do to our container? Um, right now, our container is just sort of empty. There's nothing in it. We can apply a background color to it, though. Um, right now, the background color is white because that's what the body is. We want to like apply like a lighter white color. Um, I recommend using F8, 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 just because that's what I use. Um, that will apply a new color to the page. I'm not sure why it's not showing up, but um, that does that that will apply a new color. That's like a lightish gray color, just so it stands out differently from the thing from the white background. Um, we can also add display. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we can add display. This will be flex too, because there will be contents or blocks of text and images inside of here. Um, yeah, so for now, we can just leave it as flex flow. Uh, really, we'll put a flex flow, which is just saying what direction should the flex apply in? Like, notice our nav bar is deploying it in the row direction because by default it's row. But our we're going to be reading our web page from top down, so we want column because that's how top down works. Uh, we're going to apply that flex wrap again to just be wrap. This will allow us to change change lines. Much like we saw at the header when everything was stacked on top of each other. We want this to happen with the web page here. Um, last but not least, we also do justify content. Um, just in case everyone wants to add anything, we can do space evenly. So that way if you add things, it'll still be evenly spaced evenly. Now let's look at this. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out why you. What if I just get lead and do it? Give ID equals in there. Not gonna show up. I'm forgetting a tag somewhere. Maybe I'm forgetting a close. There's an A. There's a div. Nah, I'm not forgetting any tags. Hmm. Uh, give me like two seconds. Let me just look at this again. Uh, looking through. Bonus points, I make a debug. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to look is to a reason why that's supposed to run the CSS. I know it exists. That is strange. Why are you? Okay. 
Okay. Anyway. Um, well, while that's being weird, we can move on to the nap thing. <laughs> we can move on to the hamburger tech. That one's more interesting. I want to talk about it, to be honest. So uh, let's say, let me set up a situation for you guys. Let's say you're on your mobile device. And again, that means your page is like this big. Uh, this is what it would look like if you looked on a really small window or a mobile device, which isn't really good. <laughs> um, it doesn't look the best and it just isn't good design as you can't even see some of your nav buttons. So we can fix this by when our page gets a certain width, we can add uh, a hamburger menu or have a new div tag display. Um, so let's set this up with HTML. Um, what we want to do is directly inside of the nav bar div ID still, but outside of this nav tag, we want to create a new kind of uh, div division. So we're going to do div and the I, we're going to give it an ID. We're going to call it hamburger container. Hamburger burger container like that um oh actually not we're gonna call it hamburger menu hamburger menu um inside of that we're going to have an h1 tag so h1 and we'll have a close tag we can do style equals uh we're going to margin at the top uh, let's say 13 pixels, that should be good. Um, and that's it. So you can actually get a hamburger menu with ASCII or a hamburger button with ASCII without doing all the, the drawing. Um, if you want to use it, you can, it, the, the ASCII color for it is an ampersand, uh, pound sign, 9776. And a semicolon. And that'll create a now it's right there. That'll create uh, a hamburger menu <laughs> button. But now it's not in line and it's not in line because there's not much space for it to be in line. So we wanna test this out, of course, when the page is a certain size. So we, can, we wanna make it so when the page becomes a certain size, this display thing will show up. And we can do that with CSS. Um, you can also do a JavaScript, but it's easier to do this kind of solution with CSS. Um, at the very top of your page, your CSS page, you could do at media, which refers to the document window. Um, you can set max width to be, let's say, 940px, which is pixels. And what this means is that when the width gets 940 pixels, something will have, you can have different CSS options apply. So um, with our nav bar, for instance, which is this thing, um, we can apply some new CSS to it. So we can change the display to be none. And what happens is when this page gets too small, like 940 pixels, let's say, the thing, oh, no, I won't because did I close it out? No, there's an error somewhere. Oh, I forgot to send me colon. My bad. Already colon. Should be a colon between max width and this. Okay. When I have a smart one, so I'll tell me where it is. But when you change the width, the nav bar will disappear, which is what we want. And it reappears once it goes back into 940. So you can keep it like this, like just below 940. And now we can do another check with media. So we can say max width or min width, I'm sorry, min width, the minimum width. So min width can be 941 pixels. So that's the opposite of 940. Um, without that semicolon. And we can have a hamburger menu up here. So hamburger menu, we can do display or disappear. We want it to dis disappear here. You can you display none? Uh, you save it. You won't see it happening because right now our hamburger menu isn't set to ever dis uh, be showing up anywhere. 
Um, you can fix that by changing the display properties part. So um, if we go to the bottom of the CSS page, but above the nav element, we can do a hamburger menu and we could apply some special CSS to it, but we're gonna give it the typical CSS. So like height 100% with a semicolon, of course. Uh, width can be 80 pixels because it's it's a hamburger menu. It's not that big. Um, I forgot a semicolon, I mean a colon. Um, we're gonna get margin on the right and the left. So you can do margin right. And that will be 10 pixels. That's a good number. Margin left which will be five pixels. And of course we can align this text because at the end of the day, this hamburger menu is just a text thing. So text align will work for it and give it a center. Um, we can specify the cursor to be a pointer because this one won't be a, a link to anywhere. So it won't really appear as clickable to those. So what cursor will do is when you hover over something, that little clickable thing that appears will let people know that it's clickable. Um, yeah, and we can, of course, specify the color to match white like the rest of the page's content. Okay, um, cool. So if we save this, um, I'll put this back down here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and if we look, where did I put my hamburger thing? Uh, one way to go. Where'd you go? Where did you go? Uh, Fagus isn't going to tell me. Okay, find it myself. Uh, unless I typed that wrong. Oh, one second while I check if I spelled or typed something wrong. Min width, that's max width. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, just making sure. I'm going to get So, um, you keep this page like that big and make sure that we have all these right. Um, we also want to apply the same sort of uh, effect that we had with these things, the hover things. We want to apply that same sort of effect with the hamburger menu because it is a clickable thing. Um, we won't be adding the underline, obviously. <laughs> it's not a link, so there's no need to do that. We can apply it the same way we did with the hamburger menu by doing uh, hamburger menu uh, colon hover. And the special things we apply to this one is just the background color um, will change to be the, uh, in the same color as um, whatever your other, your original hover thing was. So. Mine is that weird dark blue color, so I just copy that attribute over, place it there, save, and of course, we can give it a transition. Transition of 0 0.3 seconds, I believe is what I had. 0 0.3 seconds, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and what we can also do is look, um, where's that elements right here. So if we notice that, um, let me show you my page. Uh, so um, I was right, that thing's still not showing up. It's exciting anywhere. Let me change this one. I'm gonna disappear, make the nav bar displayed be none for now. So I can see where it is. Actually speaking of that, is this? Is it because um, inside of your HTML you have it, if you go down to the bottom, oh, never mind. I see you have two different things. Never mind. Oh, okay. Well, um, anyway, I'm trying to figure out why this isn't showing up. Um, trying to look for it. Oh. <laughs> it's also spelled wrong, but um, I don't think that's why it was not working though. Yeah, it wasn't okay, but that is that was spelled wrong, but anyway, um, 
Is it this? Yeah, that's about right. What if I get rid of this? And then apply that there. Okay, yeah, so there's something with this. If I reapply that CSS. Go, go away, zoom thing. It won't go away. Okay. Um, I know why. So we we don't we have this thing going away, but it's not just show back up. So um you can make it show up by doing uh giving it a display. I believe is what fixes it. Oh, it's an error. Uh It is not showing up for some reason. I'm trying to look over this really fast. Um, you can look over and find something's missing. You know, something is missing. I think I know what it is. We're looking at. Uh, where are you? Uh, margin. Something with this. I see what it is. I'm stupid. It's supposed to be H1. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, that's H1. I probably spelled something else wrong, too. I'm very bad at spelling. Let's get rid of. Where is that? This. And then bring that back up there. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. So now it's the same. Now it's the right size, but the positioning is wrong. So let's do this. Uh, class, oops, ID equals uh, hamburger menu. And we get rid of the nav bar temporarily. Uh, display. Okay. Oh, that's gone. We can look at uh, this stuff. That's fine. Nav elements. I believe those are all fine. Why are you not showing up? Where are you hype? Oh, wait. I got one. Save. I believe the Z order is below because I forgot to set that earlier. Uh, so if I give the hamburger menu a Z index at two, three, it should display. Why is it not displaying? Man. If you go to um, Chrome or whatever, you can use developer tools to see where it shows up. On. Let's refresh or reload because that doesn't work with this one. Yeah. That's about 950. Uh, oops. So if you look, and it's funny. Uh, where are you hiding? You know, it's still, it's, I have it hidden. Why is it staying hidden? I'm not sure why it's staying hidden. Uh, looking zero. Pretty sure I spelled margin right, yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, it did. I don't know why I'm saying it did. Now you can't find that margin value, which is weird, because it should be able to. I was get rid of it for now. And if we look over here, it's also something else that looked alarming. Uh, where is it? I need to bring this back. Have container, there you go, or bar. I didn't bring that back there, okay. So looking through, I don't see why it's not showing up anymore, but um, the code really just isn't, isn't having my way here. But um, what I would like to show before time runs out here is the fixed position thing. So I will show this by typing in um, some random stuff uh, here. And I don't think I can resize it that small actually. So we're gonna copy and paste like a bunch of content. <laughs> uh, let's go find some. Uh, let's look for that placeholder text thing. That placeholder text, that's like always Latin. Apparently it's a thing. Uh, like it's weird. Oh, I forgot the text. Place order text. Uh, this thing. This thing is like standard for some reason. Anyway, um, I do want to show you what's cool about having a fixed bar. So if we just put some default text here, just paste a bunch of it, um, and get rid of this fixed position. Uh, Where's you? Where is header? Right here. So I get rid of fixed. We go back to the page, uh, which is there. Okay. So save. Okay. So if you go back to the page, um, it's full with a bunch of random content. Um, but if we scroll down, the nav bar doesn't stay with us, and that's cool and all, I guess, but we can make it better if we apply a fixed position to it. So remember how I said fixed means that it will stay relative on the window where it is at all times based on position. So if we do position fixed, what this will do, make sure I save that. Uh, what this will do is it'll make the bar stay with you at all times. So if I make this smaller, uh, see how as I'm scrolling down, the bar still stays there. So like my nav buttons will stick with me no matter what I do. Um, same sort of thing there. That's what makes it helpful. Um, that's why it's really necessary that uh, you, it's pretty much like a standard to keep the bar with you at all times um, nowadays. Uh, it just looks cleaner. It makes more sense navigation wise. And it's really no reason to never not have that. Um, it's relatively easy to set up too. As you saw, it took like no no trouble at all, really. Um, we can also apply a margin to this too. Um, if we do margin uh, zero auto, what this will do is it will create a square sort of like thing. So, um, so the margin here with our container is always going to be uh, it's always going to have a margin of a certain length and a certain height. So like um, zero means that there's no margin on the left and the right of the page, but the auto means that it's on the top and the bottom. So it's like a square sort of thing, if that makes sense. So if you do like, it should be like that, zero auto, it creates this. Uh, no margins at the height, margins at the, no margins at the zero, margins at the height that are auto. And auto just means that it's auto set to uh, fit within the page width. So here, for instance, um, we create a thing where it's like, you know, uh, it stays within the margins of the width. It's always the same, but like with height, I don't think I can make it that small. Yeah, um, it basically just keeps margins away from the page. You see it moving as it gets bigger and smaller. Um, of course, if the cage gets too small, it has no more space. It has to cut off. 
But um, again, that's something we can fix, which we will. So let's go ahead and while the nav bar is being, while the thing is being weird, let's go um, talk about getting our container to be uh, properly uh, spaced out and aligned and even. So we can, again, put some more blocks in to specify like text box and uh, image box so you can talk about yourself, you know? So inside there, we can do a div and we can do class equals, uh, we can do info image block. We're gonna have an image here and it's just gonna be a block on the image. Um, we can close out that, I forgot to close out the div. We can close out the div. That, and then we can also right below that div have another div with the class um, info text block. And, or, uh, yeah, info text block. Text block. Now, this might seem like a good setup to have like, your text box and your other blocks in its own thing. Actually, I'm going to move. I'm going to move the uh, text box above the image block because that'd be better. So it, it might sound better to have your info blocks and image blocks inside the container here. But remember that you're going to have more than one text in the image block describing yourself. So you want to put that into its own, you want to put all these blocks into its own container outside of this one. So we want to create another container inside of the main container or the body container. Uh, we're going to call this one uh, big info block. And these will house, this will house one set of an info block and an image block or a text block and an image block. So we're gonna do class because these will be given to multiple blocks equals big info block. So we can modify these separately on its own. Um, and here's how we can do that. So if we go back to our CSS, go underneath here, underneath the container or at the very bottom of the file, we're gonna apply some CSS to the big info block to give it some dimensions. Uh, big info block. And we're gonna give it a width of 100%. So it could be the 100% of the container. I forgot the colon. Um, we can give it a height that can be 40% of the container. We can give it a uh, padding on the top, which again, padding goes on the inside. So inside this container, there's gonna be spacing at the top. Um, we can give some 80 pixels so there's that way it's not, the text isn't going to be touching the top of this nav bar. Um, of course, we're gonna go flex for display. So our display will be flex. And um, our flex direction. So flex direction again is how the flex should be applied to the container. So for a nav bar, it's row, and for this container, it was column. We're gonna display these, display these row wise, so you want it to be row. And same thing for flex rep. Um, we're gonna, much like we did for the container, we're gonna have a lot of wrapping on the bar. So that way if someone resizes, it will switch down to the next layer and not get cut out. And then we can do align items, uh, which will align all the items on the center. <laughs> so that's all the CSS that's really needed for these big info blocks. If we look at them now, we can see that there's some space here. Um, now, the spacing here is not ideal. It doesn't look like it's taking up that much space. And you might be wondering why it's not taking up that much space. And a part of that comes down to um, this. So earlier we said the container is 100%, um, but that, that doesn't really work the best with percentages, as you can uh, see here. It doesn't really know what to take 100% of. So if we do like 100, not 100 pixels, um, I think I typed in the wrong spot too. So let me do that. 
Oh, oh, I didn't. Okay. So, if we change it to, let's say, 100 pixels. Uh, 100 pixels. Uh, actually, I'll make it too small. Let's do 1,000 pixels. Uh, oh, that's the wrong thing. Oops. Uh, I'm looking for the container. There it is. 100%. So let's change to 100 pixels, 1,000 pixels. Um, we see here that it takes up a lot more space versus uh, the 100, which took up little to none. So if you do 100 pixels, per se, let's see, 100 pixels, that'd be good. Nice, it's like too small. Yeah, I thought so. 1,000 pixels. That takes up relatively all the space that you would need. Um. If you look at our info block now, if it would show me, um, you see here, it's really far down. And that's probably because of the padding. Oops. And that's probably because of our padding. Probably type 800. Uh, oh, no. Eight. That's a container. Uh, save. In this case, that serves me weird. Where is the info block hiding? Okay. Why do you keep scrolling out of my view? Okay. So right here we see it. The height is a bit more sensible. Still kind of weird, but um we can it's something we can work with. Um versus a hundred percent. You know, that was a bit weird. Um it didn't really look right. I can also show you guys something else you could do. Um I don't see a reason why anyone would want to do this, but uh I think you can. I don't think it like will actually do anything, but if you can, if you do like 100% pixels, I think it just takes percentage. But it actually, I, I've been told that it does something different, but I can't really justify the trueness to that. So um, don't don't do things like putting pixels in 100 because I don't think it actually does anything. But uh, in in the event that it does, you know, someone could write, hey. It, it might do something, it might not, you know. So, anyway, we have our info blocks. Um, we can now put content into them. So, let's start with the image block because we it start with the image block, it'll be easier. So, we go to its CSS. Um, we can do big image block, and we can do um, oh, not in, uh, info, yeah, we can do with. 40%, I mean 40%, I'm sorry, 430 pixels. That's a good enough width. Um, height is 300 pixels. And display is also going to be uh, flex. And align items will be centered. Oh, sorry, align items. Enter really got me. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's the styling for that one. Uh, relatively similar for image info text block, except there's a lot less content here. It's going to be text, so it needs a lot less styling. Um, you can do width for this could be sixty percent, and the height can be three hundred. And you might be wondering why we have the width of the info block the text being 60 or percentage and that image being the same. Keep in mind that text is in line and it can be morphed around the line relatively easily. Images can't. So image blocks take up a lot less. Uh, uh, image blocks are block elements. So they take up more space. They're harder to morph into different lines. So it's better to have this one be a percentage rather than the spacing. And um, I'm actually gonna show you guys what this looks like, but just for the sake of time, we're gonna skip over all the typing of adding the image and the text because it's relatively simple. So here's what I will do. Um, I'm gonna open uh, this thing. Uh, another, it's the same thing, but I wanna have done ahead of time. Not sure I need that. Uh, I'll close that. We can open. I gotta find it because now there's two indexes. Um, sure. Um, so software engineering test. Index open. Okay, so here is what the clean thing would look like. Um, wow, look that broke. Um, so what I did here is I could probably get these to work. 
Um, I think because I moved them. No, they're still there. Oh, no, that's the wrong file. Yeah, I moved them. Oops. Well, it's going to unarchive them. <laughs> and then, uh, put them back. And, okay. Yeah, okay. So they should come back. <laughs> Let's refresh it. Logo. No, oh, you still want to be missing. Man, I really need that here so I can show you guys. I want to show you. Just rebrowse for it, maybe it'll come back up or reopen it. Weaver is so fun. There we go. Okay, so um, with this in mind, what I can show you is um, if we open this page up, uh, we added the flex box and stuff that we added here. This was going to be our image block that we added, as you can see. If we resize it, uh, you guys are smaller. The text will dynamically align, but images don't. They normally don't. Now, when we applied that um, that flex display to the container or the big info block here, uh, if I look for it, the container here, this stuff we applied here before is what's happening here. So, notice that the wrap here, like for a navigator navbar, it's in a row. As you see, it's like aligning based on a row. And we have column specified for here. So this aligns column-wise when the page gets too small. And we still see everything in the width. Now, um, what's happened earlier is a hamburger button is showing up. But when it became too small, our hamburger button appeared. And our nav bar went from being this thing to being this. And we accomplished this lookout we would have accomplished with JavaScript. Um, and what's happening here is on, on resize is a listener. So when someone resizes the window, these two functions get called. Um, force hide hamburger, what that does is it'll just get rid of this hamburger when it gets over, you know, the page. And same thing for make body column. What this will do is it calls this function. And we can set variables that are equal to the element of the page. So document refers to the web page or our HTML file. We could do get element by ID, which will return the um, return the object based on the ID name. You could also do by class name, which I have done actually right here. But the thing to be aware of with class names is cl classes can be reused by multiple objects. So you can have, uh, like here, we have four different div tags for our classes. So it returns an array of items. So you need to loop around these uh, using your typical array traversal loop. So for i equals zero, i is less than the length of the array, i plus plus. Um, and we go through the array and we change the width. So that way the text box now takes up 100% of the screen which is what we saw here. It went from taking up 1080 to 100%. And we also changed the, the flex direction to be column reverse for this one. And that just means, notice how we have the image here and the image here on this one. Um, when we align this, if we had these facing the same way, the image would be up here and the image would also be down here just because of how we had the column specified. So if we change it to be one, one of them can be row and the other one can be, I mean column, sorry. Now it'll be column reverse. That means the order in which the stack happening is split. So we get this. If I change this to be column, for instance, um, save it and I can go ahead and open this here. Um, if I try to change it here, we see that the images are now stacked together. And that's not what we want. We want it to be reversed. So what this is doing is it's changing the CSS style to be reversed. And then we change it back if the the, the width of the page is less than, uh, sorry, greater than 1095. Why 1095? Because I can't do math and I did math wrong and didn't get 1080 correctly. So this actually happens a bit off pace here. You see that this happens before 
this happens. Um, so yeah, and these links still work. GitHub still works, although since Dreamweaver is broken and this is hooked on local, so it doesn't actually work. But um, if I open it on file here, the GitHub would still take me to my GitHub page. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of what's happening here. Um, what's happening up here, show hamburger is what happens when we click the hamburger button. So again, the hamburger button is hidden when the page is at a certain length. But as you see, when we go down here, the hamburger button appears and now something we can click on. If we look at our hamburger button code, which is right here, um, we see that is an on click listener. So this will call this JavaScript function as soon as someone clicks on the button. And what this JavaScript button does, I mean, this JavaScript code does is it will get our hamburger container, which is um, this thing that stays hidden too. This thing is called the hamburger container. Um, and it'll say like, if the display is equal to block. So that means if it's not none, pretty much, um, we're gonna make it none and else we're gonna show it. So for example, if, if we had it to um, like this, this right now, the display is none. So that means it would, the, the pass, the check would fail and it would so okay, it's not showing. So let me go ahead and run this part and make it block. But now if I were to click it again and I didn't have this if check, there would be no way to get rid of this. So that's what this is doing. If it's already set to block, let's get rid of it and make it none. And that's essentially how that works. Um, that's the basics of it, really. Um, it's not too bad. It usually comes down to art style and alignments. Um, I know that went on for a while, but um, and I went on a lot longer than I would like to. Yeah. Um, is there any questions? Because I know it's getting towards nine. Um, any questions, comments, concerns? Anything you'd like me to answer? Anything you'd want me to comment on? Not nothing political. Anything at all? Um, let me have chat open too in case someone posts to say something in chat. Uh, no comments. Okay. Well, this code will be on GitHub. Oh, it's actually on GitHub right now. <laughs> I can use my link to get there. <laughs> um, this is it. I can post the repo in chat. Um, this is the same code that I have here, so you can experiment with it. Um, I won't be on today, but tomorrow I will. I, I'd like to go over how to set this hamburger thing up um, one by one because I feel like it's important and it gives you a really good intro to JavaScript. Um, I'd like to get that set up. Maybe we could do it one day in a Discord call. Um, of course, there'll also be a, a thing for this. Feel free to use this template to create your own resume. That was the goal for this. If you guys create your own online resume to show to employers. Um, I think it'll be a lot better than showing you on paper resume because it sort of stands out as your own. Your own resume is also your own work. Um, the challenge here for you guys is to be able to make a contact page work and an accomplishments page work. Um, you can get the links by following the same thing with the home. Contact, I wanted to set up using a JavaScript form, but since I didn't really go over that, maybe I'll do that in a Discord call one day for people who are interested. Um, accomplishments would just be like another one of these, just to say your accomplishments. That was a goal. Um, one day I'll finish this up too, like with all the code fully working with a contact page and everything. So you guys can also use that in case, you know, in case you, you can't really figure it out. But um, yeah, if there are no further questions, that's all I have. Um, I hope you guys learned something out of this. And if you're really interested in more HTML development, I can post more um, in Skillshare. You can talk to me. I'm sort of experienced in um, web development. I've made a site before. Um, so uh, I, I can help you to the best of my ability. As long as it's not marked down, well, we're going to that a different day. But yeah, um, that's all I have.